My plan is to keep the Magna harness on the bike and add to it whatever I need from the VFR harness. The primary thing we have to get from the VFR harness is the ICM. So we'll cut the ICM off the Magna harness and bring the ICM from the VFR harness on over. We'll have to cut the ICM connectors off of both harnesses and splice the VFR connector into the Magna harness. So starting with the VFR wire diagram, I zeroed in on the ICM and rearranged it on a piece of paper and traced each wire so I could put a label on each. And then I did the same thing for the Magna ICM so I could lay the two next to each other. Starting at the top, we can match the ground wires. So we'll connect green to black. We won't be using the rear coil wire. Common for all the coils, black white to black white. Not used. Neutral switch, light green to black light green. Side stand, green white to black green. Tachometer, yellow green to black red. Pulse gens not used. VFR, pulse gens, and coil feeds will be added to the Magna harness. I was able to use this information to label a picture of the Magna ICM connector. I want to point out that there's two black-white wires in the Magna harness. The blue arrow indicates the black-white wire that we'll be using because it's a common for all the coils. The other black-white wire will be eliminated, along with the other pulse generator wire and the coil feeds. You'll want to cut those wires so they're about four inches still attached to the connector. And what that'll do is leave four inches less on the harness, on the Magna, and it'll get those wires out of the way because you won't be connecting anything to them. Cut the remaining wires at the connector, and that will leave more wire on the Magna harness. This picture shows what the top half of the previous diagram was trying to communicate. So here's the VFR ICM connector, and I was able to label it based on the information from the diagrams as well. You'll keep the entire length of these wires I marked in black attached to this connector. You won't be cutting these. You'll have to unravel them from a VFR harness. These wires marked in blue will be spliced to existing wires in a Magna harness. You'll want to cut these so you have about four inches of wire hanging off of this connector. Once you've got this removed from the VFR harness, here's how you'll connect it to the Magna harness. And this picture is a representation of the bottom half of that diagram from before. You can see where the information is the same on both the diagram and the picture. A table has been added underneath the picture that also shows the splicing information. So when it comes to placing the VFR ICM into the Magna harness, there's three pictures you'll probably want. The first is the Magna ICM connector with the wire cut lengths on it. The second is the VFR ICM with its wire cut lengths on it. And lastly, and probably the most important picture you'll want, is the picture of the VFR ICM connector showing the colors of the wires that are spliced together. Now let's see what we need from the VFR harness. We'll need the four coils, the ICM connector, and each of the coil wires. If you're going to carry over the fuel pump, then you're going to need to make sure that you carry over the rest of the red-yellow wire and the fuel pump relay connector. You'll also want to keep the black wire that's attached to that connector and cut it near the fuse box. We'll also need the black-blue wire on the fuel pump relay connector, which will also include the fuel pump connector and a piece of the attached ground wire. You'll only need about four or five inches of that ground wire so you can cut it out of the rest of the harness and then just screw it to the frame. You'll also need the fuel pump relay and the fuel pump too. The last full three wires that we'll need from the VFR harness are for the pulse generator and its connector. So this is the only part of the wire harness that we'll need. The remaining five wires on the connector will need to be cut about four inches long. They'll be spliced into the Magna harness. There are some more electrical items coming over that are part of the VFR motor. The pulse generator, whose connector mates up directly. The starter motor, which is fed from the Magna harness. The stator, which also connects directly to the existing Magna harness. The neutral switch and the oil pressure switch. The Magna already has a black wire for the neutral switch, so we'll be cutting this one off. We'll also cut the connector off the blue-red wire and replace it with one that'll fit up to the Magna harness. Here's what it looks like on the VFR motor. The arrow shows where the neutral wire plugs in. This is how the neutral wire is routed on top of the engine. The blue-red wire, which is the oil pressure switch, shares the same connector as the neutral wire. We'll be cutting this neutral wire off the connector because the Magna already has a neutral wire that feeds from the bottom. It's shown in orange here and it's taped to the starter wire shown in green. Here it is from a different angle with the exhaust and brake pedal removed. Then we'll be cutting the connector off of the blue-red wire and replacing it with one that will fit up to the Magna harness. The next step is to unravel the VFR harness and cut out just this part of it. This is the VFR wire harness and I've labeled all the connectors so I know what they're used for. Here's the ICM right up the back of the fuel pump relay connector, which I'll need. And here's the first coil wires, for, and that's for cylinder four. 
along with the pulse generator wires, which those I will need as well. And moving along, we've got two more coil wires. This looks like cylinders one and two. And then here's cylinder three right here. We'll end up unraveling the VFR wire harness from the ICM to the fuse box that I'm currently holding. I'd carefully cut about a one inch slit into the tape that was wrapped around the wire harness, and then I would unravel it by hand until I couldn't unravel it anymore, and then I'd cut another slit and continue on. I did this all the way up to the fuse box. I decided not to unravel the flashing green wires. Those are two of the coil feeds. Okay, I reached my first goal. I have removed all the insulation all the way up to the fuse box. So it wasn't as hard as I thought. I thought I was going to spend more hours doing this, and it was actually, I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes. If you've never done this before, and I've never done this before, it's not just wrapped with electrical tape. There's also a lot of this heavy insulation. I'm sure it's for heat protection. And I have a couple sections here that uh, seem to have stayed somewhat intact, uh, whereas a lot of it kind of flaked off and broke apart. So I decided to take this connector apart and see if there was any way to remove the wires and push new ones in without actually cutting them. I found that the wires were epoxied in the connector and this wouldn't be possible. That means I'm back to clipping the wires from the connector. This light green one, which I'm going to clip up. I'm going to try and give myself four or five inches. I may end up cutting them shorter later. So that was the neutral switch. That's going to go on the magna. The next one I'm going to need to clip. The tachometer wire is a yellow wire with a green trace. And that's it for this row. Next I need to cut the green white, which is a third from the bottom. This one, which is side stand wire. Right there. And the black white And then the last one would be this green, which is going to be tied to black on the magna harness. The rest of the wires that I have not clipped, I need to fish out of this spaghetti mess. After removing more tape and untangling wires, I finally have what I need from the VFR harness, which takes me from the full wire harness to this. There is one more wire to deal with that's not part of this harness, and that would be the blue-red wire that comes with the VFR engine I mentioned earlier. We have to cut the connector off its free end and replace it with one that will fit with this one on the existing Magna harness. It feeds the oil pressure light in the tachometer. This is a turn signal pigtail that came with my VFR harness. This connector fits, and I'll splice it to the blue-red wire on the VFR engine. Remember, we'll be cutting this neutral wire off the engine because the Magna harness already provides one from the bottom. To add the connector to the blue-red wire, first I cut away the two leftmost wires from the spare turn signal pigtail. Then I spliced it to the blue-red wire. That kept the blue-red wire matched to the blue-red wire on the magna harness, which is also the rightmost wire. The left two wires on the magna connector are no longer used. They were the coil triggers. We'll be using the coil triggers from the VFR harness. I went to Lowe's and bought some corrugated wire wrap. They had it at Harbor Freight, and the prices were about the same, but the Harbor Freight stuff was only rated at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and this was rated at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. I bought a bag of small wire ties. I bought Super 88 electrical tape. It's a little bit thicker, and it's rated for up to 221 degrees Fahrenheit. I also have mounted my fuel pump relay. This is the fuel pump relay, and you can see that it's got a slot there. All I did was put a radiator clamp around the frame here. So I take this rubber, put it in there, and then I just push it down far enough that it stay away from the battery terminal and that's how my fuel pump relay is and then these are the two wires that feed the fuel pump the green one has to go to a ground I think I'll probably put it on one of these two my next step is to marry the two wire harnesses together I'm holding the VFR ICM connector in my hand it has the part of the VFR harness that I need to join to the magna harness this is the magna ICM connector that I'll be clipping off I'll splice the VFR connector in its place and wrap the remaining VFR harness and attach it alongside the magna harness I just wanted to point out this is a VFR ECM and this is the magna ECM and you can see there's a difference it's a little less than an inch another gentleman had commented that his ECM I happen to have two of the VFR ECMs by the way that's how I have one on the bike already and the other gentleman on the internet had pointed out when he tried to put his in he was gonna have to change something here's the bottom of it and the bottom of mine is actually in the same place as the, the 95 but his was hanging another 25 millimeters lower, plus it still has to have this in it. And he was concerned because this metal here is actually the swing arm, so it moves a little bit. It doesn't move too much at this point because we're pretty close to where it pivots. But, uh, but it still moves, and so he's, he was concerned about that. 
But I got mine in. I had to wrestle it in, but I remembered that he had mentioned that and I couldn't figure out why I could get mine in so easy. Then I remember during one of my battery changes, I noticed that there was a piece of plastic screwed in here that wasn't attached to anything. And if you look, I have a broken plastic here. Normally there's a piece of plastic that goes from here up to here and it covers this area. That's the top of the ECM. Uh, and I never fixed it because the battery box is pretty stout. If you're gonna try this swap and you wanna put the ECM in the same place, you might struggle or you could break that off and put it in there like mine happened to be anyway. This is the Magna harness on the Magna bike and this needs to come off and be replaced with the one from the VFR. Once you take the tape off the Magna ECM connector, you're left with this insulation that's already split, which makes it easier to work with. I haven't cut them all off yet, but the ones that I cut are the ones I don't need based on that diagram. So anything you see with a red X on it, they're not used at all because those were pulse generators and coils. The VFR harness we're adding has its own pulse generator and coil wires. Okay, the deed is done. And you can see this is the Magna harness that no longer has any ECM connector on it. Those wires that are shorter up there are the ones that I cut and left longer on the connector. These short ones will have their ends taped and be tucked back into that insulation. All the rest of those need to go onto the VFR harness, onto these pigtails, onto these wires that are here that are hanging off. I decided to wrap the VFR harness before splicing its ECM connector to the Magna harness. I began by snapping together some of the VFR connectors to the motor. This helped to determine which wires should be wrapped together. Then I wrapped only the places where the wire harness had intersections. I discovered this was the same method Honda used when I unwrapped the VFR harness. And you can see I've, I've done some bundling now. I still have this plugged in, and I think I mentioned earlier the green wire here doesn't go to anything. If you notice, it's on this end, and when it comes out here, there's no more green wire. It's just taped up in there. It's the blue red wire. That one feeds to here because this is the one that goes in to the connector I spliced, which makes it the connector with the blue red wire on the Magna harness. I pulled the VFR harness off the bike and wrapped it all with the high temperature electrical tape. This will make it easier to fish through the frame so I can solder the wire connection to the Magna harness. This is the connector for the fuel pump relay. The only wires I didn't wrap in electrical tape are the ones that came off as a single wire. This is the fuel pump connector. This green wire is a ground and it'll bolt to the frame. The blue wire is a main feed. I'll probably put the corrugated tube on it and wrap it in electrical tape after I get it on the bike. This black wire will join to the black wire on the Magna harness that comes out of the fuse box. You'll need to leave that wire completely intact on the Magna harness and just tap this one off of it. This is the blue-red wire for the oil pressure warning light. I've already added the connector that fits up to the Magna harness. This feeds the cylinder floor coil. These two plug into connectors coming from the VFR motor. This one is for the pulse generator, and this one feeds the oil pressure sensor. This is the cylinder three coil feed, and this is for cylinder one and cylinder two. This black white wire is the common for all the coils. This single wire feeds all the coils in the VFR harness. I'll put a male spade connector on the end and connect it to either the front coil feed on the Magna harness or this rear coil feed on the Magna harness. You cannot connect it at the ECM. The black white wire on the Magna harness has to be connected at the ECM because not only do the other ends feed the coils, but they also run up into the handlebars to the run kill switch as well as the keyed ignition switch. So make sure you connect this black white wire on the VFR harness to the end of one of the coil feeds from the Magna harness. I just wanted to show you that I shoved the, this VFR end through here and then there's the Magna wires I have to attach to it. This is why I put the, the tape on it, is because I knew I was going to have to shove this through here. Once I solder it to the magnet connector, I won't be able to pull it back. So I'll have to install the corrugated sheathing with it already on the bike. The good news is the corrugated tubing is split, so it'll be easy to slip over the wire. The difficult part will be wrapping it with tape afterward. I slid the heat shrink on and twisted the wires together, and then I reviewed it as the last check before I soldered the wires. First we have the black red to the yellow green. Next we have the black light green to light green. Now black to green. Black white to black white and last is black green to green white there it is the vfr icm connector vfr icm and you can see now it's all taped up and you can see where it splits off kind of into the two looms this branch is the original magna harness this branch is the vfr harness that was added got quite a bit of extra here I ended up putting in a loop and stuffing it behind the battery box. 
I decided to use COP sticks instead of the four standard VFR coils. COP stands for coil over plug. The coil is actually in that stick and you only have to run low voltage wires to them. A gentleman from the V4 Muscle Bike Forum out of Australia had posted that he test fit a CBR coil in his Magna and it looked pretty promising. I decided to give him a try and ordered the set off eBay. Or you can purchase them brand new for $35 to $40 per coil. They come off a 2008 through 2013 CBR1000RR. I also wanted a cap to keep the coil away from the elements. I found these for the Ford, and looking at the picture, I figured they were probably about the right size. It turned out to be almost perfect. The set I got was like 20 bucks, and when you put it in with the seal on, it does kind of dish this out. Boy, it's almost like a suction cup here. I didn't like the way the coils could vibrate when they were installed, so I made this vibration isolator using some radiator hose. The radiator hose was the right thickness when wrapped around the coil to keep it from vibrating when it was installed. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to take this and slit it. And then I'm going to cut about a quarter inch or so out. So now I'll cut a strip off of that. I need to cut a little more out of here. Take about another quarter inch, I guess. Having a gap after it's wrapped makes it easier to install. I decided to trim this lip off the Ford coil boot so that it wouldn't dish out when it was installed. This lip in here snaps into there. And it almost acts like it was made for it. One last thing I wanted to point out is that on the Ford COP seal, I had to trim this down. And you can see here's the trim version because when I would install this in the cylinder with my vibration dampener, it would push this entire seal over the snap. By trimming it down, everything fit nice and flush. I ended up trimming this right above that first rib. Installing the right rear coil is a little tricky because the frame is right above it. So first I put the vibration isolator on the coil over. Then you push this guy in, you can see it's on an angle and it wants to hit the frame. Here's the trick. If you twist this, it, it'll, it'll go in. And then you lift this up again, push the vibration isolator in there, and then you put that boot up a little bit so it snaps. But now you just push it down, and there it is all the way in. And then to get it out, it's kind of the, kind of the same thing. Pull up on the plug. Before you can pull this back far enough and start twisting it out, you got to get the vibration isolator out. And if you can push this down in lightly again and push some force anyway sideways and keep twisting up in the vibration isolator, there you go, you can see it worked its way up. I think I should pull that out with my finger or I can use the screwdriver to help work it out. Take, this, take that guy out or at least lift it above and then you can do the same thing. To get it out, you just twist this back and forth and there, there it comes. These are the pigtails that came off the little piece of a wire harness that I purchased on eBay from the CBR1000RR, which is what I'm using the coil over packs for. You can also get these brand new from Honda, and they'll probably be available for a long time. This video was made in July 2018. I got a pleasant surprise when I found out these use the same colors as the VFR does. I had taken this diagram out of the shop manual, and I blew it up so I could sit on the bike while I was working on it. And I marked the wires. So cylinder one is the blue with the black stripe. Cylinder three is the red with the blue stripe. Cylinder two is the yellow with the white stripe. And cylinder four is the red with the yellow stripe. The back two cylinders, my wire harness is long enough that I can actually use the pigtail the length it is. And I may have to extend these wires for the front coils. They're right on the edge of not being long enough. I decided for all the coil pigtails to put the spade connectors on them. The VFR harness had female sides already. I wanted to protect this tab that you have to press to pull these out. So I ended up coming up with this solution. Not the prettiest thing in the world. At Walmart, I got these chair bottoms for, I think it was four for two bucks. And I drilled out the back. This ribbed sheathing that I'm putting on all the wiring fits in there. By the time you wrap the ribbed wire in electrical tape, this fits kind of snug. It's still loose enough that I can slide it back after it's wrapped. And still get to the tab on the connector. It's probably not going to stay that way, but it'll be that way for a while. I found online some car battery terminal covers that look pretty good. Hopefully I'm flashing up a picture of it now in the video. It ends up covering all of this, and it looks better. Someday I'll probably order those and replace them. By using the spade connectors, it'll make it easier to change that later. A few months later, I did end up ordering the battery terminal covers, and I used those instead. I like the way this looks a lot better. It should provide a little more protection from the elements as well. 
This concludes the wiring video for the VFR to Magna engine swap. I hope you find it helpful. I probably gave you more information than you wanted to know, but it was all in the spirit of trying to make it as clear as I could. The wiring part seems to scare a lot of people away, but it's really not that hard. It's just a bit time consuming. Hopefully this will save you from the time I had to spend going through the wire diagrams, and also save you from searching for coils and the seals that work with them. There should be a list below of part numbers for some of the parts I used, as well as a link to a PDF that contains the splicing diagrams I made early in the video and a link to the V4 Muscle Bike Forum where I've documented this project.